All right, I know everybody's thinking, who is this guy? Which I am nobody, but I did study all this stuff. I did it, you know, not necessarily uh, the way everybody else does it. But anyway, I studied all this. Now, here's the interesting thing. This is all about bonding and polar molecules. And look at this. At the very end, dipole molecular moments. This is what I was studying back in the early 70s. And I mean, this whole book is filled with this stuff. There's, there's just tons of it in here. And, and I, I mean, I did it. I liked it. But that's what I did. Now, that's my background. That's it. All right. You saw my background on, you know, my early days of, of working in physics and chemistry and so forth. And most of that's related to the semiconductor industry. All crystals and very interesting. Anyway, that was dipoles. So there's a, a positive and a negative end to things. This is electron magnetic moments. The other one is di dipole molecular moments. These are electron magnetic moments. This is what's creating these spirals and causing these vortexes. And the, the, the diameter of the circle of the vortex is the energy level that's being thrown out of there. And I'm going to show that with a little bit of diagrams. They're just sort of nothing fancy but they, they should get get the point across I hope okay I have a very simple demonstration I believe explains the um, wave particle duality principle of photons now what's missing in the traditional theory is that these are vortexes spinning vortexes of particles and off of the surface of anything trillions of these spinning particles are emitted. Now, my belief is that they spin in small circles, a little larger, a little larger, until they get in, in very large, and that's the quantum states, and it goes all, you know, it's virtually inf infinite uh, up to a certain size. Uh, you know, the, the, this will be a, a continuous spectrum. This is what causes a spectrum. These are your very, very high energies. These are your lower energies out in the reds. And as these spin, they, they have a wavelength to them. So they actually do this just due to the fact that they're spinning. Due to the fact that it's a spinning negative particle is what I believe. And it is a particle. And I, we know this because it hits Crookes radiometers and turns them and spins them and if you turn the light off it stops so as far as I'm concerned that's a particle and anyway my theory accounts for all of this stuff and virtually think of it this way here's a here's the surface Poof, it gets hit by incoming photons and the it's called I'm calling a shock maybe shock 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 it's hitting and forcing these other things 186,000 miles an hour this thing was 186,000 miles an hour and they explode and they give off these these and, and we understand these quantums this is not I'm not have nothing to do about quantums not a problem now as this thing spins out here it's spinning like crazy now the tighter the spin the more power, the more, see how this would be like a real serious hit. You get hit with this, it's like a white one. This is like out in the red area, let's say. And in between these distances is all your different spectrums. Of course, it would be much bigger. But anyway, uh, the, the fact is that as the particle spins, they're the same particles, but as they spin in a tighter spin, the angular momentum would make it much more energetic, which is exactly what we find. The duration of the wavelength, which is or the wave nature is tighter and it's spinning like crazy now as you get out to the red here now so let's we understand if, if you if you if you can go with me on this part and I'm saying this would be the wavelength of a red this would be the wavelength of the next color down of course it's not going to be black this would be the wavelength of the next color down and that would be the wavelength of the next color down now if you can follow me on this so far the slit experiments fall exactly in line with this. If you were to take a um, a barrier of any sort, I'm going to grab this really quickly, and let's say there was a little tiny slit in there. Think of what would happen. This would approach it spinning like crazy. If the particle hit the slit there, it would go this way. If it came in and a particle hit as it hit this way, 
it would beam off that way. It would not hit directly behind, and this is exactly what they find. And the, the tighter the spin, the less deflection. It's just obvious. And this is exactly what they find. And I have another video that shows this in, you know, they use laser lights um, to do this. And, and they, all you have is a single wavelength virtually when they do that. So they're missing all of the spectrum of the uh, natural light from the sun. And if this guy did an experiment, fabulous experiment, and, and it's on my other um, video. And it shows that instead of these bumps that they look for, these little red light, big red light in the middle and a couple of bumps on the sides fading out. Well, this shows rainbows. White light in the middle. It's obvious. It's just, it's, the, the theory holds up. All I'm looking for is somebody to test it with your equations and all that business you do so that you can either verify it or laugh at me. That's all I got.